and welcome to another Windows 7 powered edition of Lab Rats. My name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And yeah, you're right. It is Windows 7 day again today. Didn't we just do this last week? I know, but I can't get enough. Really, no, Windows 7's coming out, right? It's a new operating system from uh, Microsoft, not from Macintosh or from Apple. Uh, and it's exciting. It's better than Vista. It's better than XP. It's, and so we're going to show you more tips and tricks this time. I can think of a few other things that are better than XP or Vista. Like what? Linux. Boo. Mac OS. Boo. No, Windows 7 is it. It's the bee's knees. Uh, we're gonna, today we're going to show you six cool uh, tricks that you may not have heard of inside Windows 7. And as you can, as you can tell, he's delighted with this episode, aren't you? I'm thrilled again, once again. I cannot be more thrilled. Did you wear your snow leopard, leopard panties today? I did. Yes, he did. See, They're riding up. All right, all right. <laughs> I can hear them. Anyway, uh, let's take a break and when we come back, Windows 7 Unknown Tips, today on Lab Rats. Well, Windows 7, uh, a palooza today on Lab Rats, and uh, let's just get into it. I'm so excited about it. Okay, well, we, we did Windows 7 last week. Yeah, but so that was the most like obvious, six. exciting, super fabulous tips that everybody knows about, that everybody read about on the internet, that kind of thing, right? Why These don't we like do that the, one? These are the secret ones, the things oh. that you may not have heard of. Okay. Well, I'm down for that. Good. Are you ready? Sure. Okay, let's do it. Number one, the first unknown secret thing that not many people have been talking about, jump listing. Yes. That's one. Sean jumping. No, it's... That's two. That's two. I'm go. making a list. Let me show you what jump listing is. This is really cool. This is, uh, Windows 7 is all about kind of access to you know your data faster easier less clicks that kind of thing okay it's taken microsoft a while i mean they kept promising easier interfaces well i think they finally almost got there with windows 7. almost so almost. you're not saying you're not saying this is great listen there's this always room cool. for improvement there's always room for improvement okay. i'm glad we're leading with this one let's go <laughs> <laughs> okay. so you ready yes. jump listing so two ways to access jump listing number one three now so as you can see down at the bottom of my screen here, there are a bunch of icons, active programs that are running. And if I click on one of those guys, you can see stuff, you know, you can see a window pop up. Or if I right click, you can actually see recently opened files. Okay. Specific to the application. So we've okay. seen this before in on the, the start menu. Right. Things I've recently opened in my recent documents. Yeah. Although that was just a list of everything. Of everything that you've done. In this particular case, it's specific to the uh, application that you're right clicking on. Okay. So in this particular case, I've right clicked and you can see it says recent, you know, Windows 7 stuff, the document why you're looking at this, the other document, Easter egg, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So they're all listed there. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one way to access the jump list. The other place, of course, is applications you recently opened. If you click mm -hmm. on your start menu, mm -hmm. you'll see a little pointer here. If you look right here, there's a little pointer next to Microsoft uh, Office Word. I right click, and now if I click on that, you see, you see the recently opened documents from that application again. Mm -hmm. So, really handy way of kind of accessing those recent documents without having to open the application, go to the file menu, and click on most recently opened files. Right, right. and that was uh, in that one you had like five or six or whatever, just a short list of a jumble of everything. This one, it might have been your fourth one back in Word documents, for example. Right. You can go straight to that just by going to a Word. Exactly. And, and looking there. Exactly. Okay. Now, while we're there, I should probably point to, uh, I have a folder sitting here, actually, mm -hmm. in my uh, start menu. Mm -hmm. Now, what's cool about this is you can do something called pinning folders. So I can grab a folder. Let's say I'm going to grab, let's see, what am I going to grab? I'm going to grab my chipset folder, which is sitting on my desktop, mm -hmm. and I'm going to click on it and drag it across here to the start menu. It's going to pop open, and I'm going to drag it onto my start menu like that. And it says, as you can see in the little tooltip here, pin to start menu. So when I let go of that, now that chipset folder stays inside of my, my start menu. So, so I can, so for example, I have a, a folder here on my system that has Andy important documents. So it's, mm -hmm. like, a, it's like a PDF of my, of my um, uh, passport and my, all my passwords and stuff like that. And I'm always having to go and look for it. Mm -hmm. Well here, I can just drag it on here and it's right there on my start menu. Okay. Very handy. So it's pin, pin documents or pin uh, folders to your start. So menu. this is something that's really important, but is not necessarily something that you use regularly enough to have it always populate inside that area. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just something you want to get, get your hands on. I mean, sometimes, for example, you'll put a, do a folder deep inside your My Documents folder, hmm. Documents folder, right? Instead of having to go and dig for it all the time, you just go there. Okay. 
So uh, I want to talk a bit about BitLocker next. Now, BitLocker, of course, is a feature that we saw on Vista. Yes. It's a way of encrypting your hard drive on your laptop, mm -hmm. right? So the idea is that, let's say you take your laptop to the airport and you leave it behind or somebody steals it, right? Uh, without a password, nobody can actually access the contents of it because it's encrypted. Now, this is only available on the enterprise version of uh, Vista, business mm -hmm. versions, that sort of thing, Ultimate, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Again, same situation here with Windows 7. However, um, this time they've allowed something called BitLocker to go. Okay. So we've all seen these little guys here, right? Yeah, I've got like uh, 600 of those in the other room of various USB capacities keys. and usefulness. So it's an external drive. Now, this is a USB key, but of course you can have an external hard drive, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. right? So I can actually use BitLocker on this now. Mm -hmm. So um, let me just plug it in. And I'm going to open it up here in my... Windows Explorer. And as you can see, it says removable disk G here. Mm -hmm. Let me select it, right click on it, and I'm going to say turn on BitLocker. Okay. So right now it's completely uh, it's wide open. open. Anyone can write or read. It. So okay. this is going to start a, a, the BitLocker, BitLocker routine. Okay. And it's going to initiate a process whereby you add a password to the drive, and it will then go through an encryption process. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here, it's now popped up. How do, you know, choose how you want to unlock this drive. Right? So when you go to unlock it to access the information, what password do you want? So you can do that. You can actually, you know, in, in enterprise environments, people in the business world you know, can use a smart card to do this as well. Okay. But you know, we don't have to worry about that uh, in this particular application. So once it's open, though, it, it looks just like any regular It looks just like anything else. Yeah, exactly. So you see all the files in there. You know, I can ch change my password, remove the password from the drive, you know, unbit locker it, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and automatically lock it uh, on this computer to when it's plugged in, that kind of thing. So kind of handy, good mm -hmm. for business, you know, if you're worried about information on your system, if you lose your system, or you lose one of these guys, which I have done often. Yep. You know, if somebody finds it, they can't access the information. Yeah, so if you've got a lot of corporate uh, information on there that uh, you don't want to get into other hands, it's right. a good technology to have. And built in. Built in, exactly. Okay, but that's only in the top uh, It's like versions. the enterprise version plus, uh, plus uh, Ultimate, I believe it yeah, is. Yeah, so if you're just using the starter edition of Windows, you're probably not you going to be interested this. in that technology. Probably anyhow. don't care about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I do want to mention one thing that I think the non-business users, or maybe the business users we care about, but the non-business users, this version of uh, Windows is very, very customizable. So if I click on, right click on my desktop here and choose Personalize here, mm -hmm. you're going to see all the new themes available for Windows 7. Um, and you know, there's uh, lots of different varieties. There's one which is kind of fun if you choose the uh, landscapes here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can hear <laughs> that it just made a noise. And different landscapes will pop up on your, on your uh, wallpaper and that sort of thing, which is no. kind of fun. Yeah, and then doing this is nothing new. You've been able to sort of customize, you know, Windows This 95. is kind of like random slideshows, but the other, what isn't new here is getting new themes. So if you mm -hmm. click on get, new, get more themes online, you click on that link. The other thing I do want to point out in this menu is it's a one place where you can actually get um, access to all kinds of different, you know, um, things like desktop icons. You can change that easily here on the left-hand side change desktop, desktop item, icons instead of going into control panel having to do that. So it's all in one place and there's a lot more of it there now than before. Exactly. It's just easier. And then I think it seems to be the theme with Windows 7. Things are getting easier to do. Mm -hmm. Microsoft really thought this through, which is great. Good. Um, and in fact, so you'll see more of this uh, with, through our friend Lucas Cochran over at Pimp My PC, his brand new show on butterscotch.com now. So uh, I know he's going to do a Windows 7 customization, the ultimate pimp for Windows 7 you know, coming up in future episodes. So check that out uh, soon. Okay, uh, let's keep going because we've got lots, lots more to cover and the time is a ticking here. I did want to mention, uh, oh, movable gadgets. Let's look at my crib notes here. Movable mm -hmm. gadgets. So you know gadgets on the, so on the right hand side here. Yes. You know, you can put little applications. There's a clock there. I have an RSS feed of news stories, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I've grabbed the gadget countdown to Windows 7. Mm -hmm. So it shows that in 12, in 12 days' time, in 18 hours and 32 mm -hmm. minutes and 36 seconds, Windows 7 will launch. As we tape this. As you watch As we this, tape it'll this be here. different. Exactly. It'll it be may be closer. already launched by the time. Yeah. It's October 22, 2009. But what's new about uh, gadgets now is you can actually grab this here. And I can now, it doesn't have to sit on that sidebar on the right-hand side anymore. Yeah, because that's the thing with the last one, the sort of bug. It's a nice idea, but it sort of created a whole pile of visual pollution over on the right-hand side of the screen. So you can grab a gadget. Uh, and actually you know, put it anywhere you like on your desktop now, mm -hmm. which is kind of handy. Um, and I know you have one final feature. I think it's probably it for me. Oh, there's one big one, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's not a visual thing. It's just that Windows 7 installs on any hardware pretty much. I mean, yeah. your old P4, you, this, is, this is one of the first 
releases a Windows that hasn't required new hardware upgrades, right? Yeah, they, every single time when they've released the specs needed to run a new operating system, they've always had like a whole long list of upgrades that you needed to do. And it's always been a boost from the previous version. Now this one is using the same hardware specs as Vista did. And it's mm -hmm. the first time it hasn't jumped up in uh, requirements, right. which is kind of nice because the hardware has now gone from underpowered to at the level from Vista was to beyond that, which means now you'll have a lot more comfortable experience right off the bat, typically. Right. So, so you, uh, key feature here, installed on your old gear, your yep. old P4, your Pentium Ds. I would wonder if it would, it would, how it would perform on a Pentium 3 at this point. Probably OK. Well, you know, uh, With the visual elements turned off, probably. Yeah, as I mentioned in the last uh, Windows 7 one that we did, I, I'm running it on my netbook on an Atom processor. That's not exactly the speediest thing in the entire world. It's speedier than some of the really old ones, but it's certainly not up to the level of the desktop processors that most people are going to have at this point. Right. And it runs just fine. It has a lot of breathing room on that, unless you take the power off, and then you're running on battery, and then it just scales everything back. So um, if you're using a desktop or a notebook that has one of the, the higher um, performance processors, you'll be fine. Totally mm -hmm. fine. Very good. Um, before we shut down this episode and get on to picture time, you had a thing about shutdown, right? Windows 7. Nice segue. So uh, the one thing that I hated, absolutely loathed yeah. about Windows Vista yeah. is that uh, when you clicked on the button at the bottom, yeah. that uh, you, so you go to Start Menu to shut it down at the end of the day, and you clicked on the little icon there that looks like it's the universal symbol for on and off. Yes. The zero and the one. Yeah, it put your computer to sleep. Oh. It didn't shut it down, which you'd think it would. Right. So now, uh, you, to get to actual shutdown, you have to s scroll through a list of options and then choose shutdown from the side. So, and now, when you go to the place where shutdown should be, it actually says shutdown. Yeah, it does, right there. So they, I think that confused a whole lot of people. A lot of people who were used to the shutdown being there were putting their computer to sleep and wondering why it was never turning off. Right. And now they've just flipped that back again. It's good. See? So. It's, it's a small thing, but, but it's important. It's important. It's very good. OK, good. Well, let's take a break. Uh, that is our Windows 7 uh, unknown tips um, today on Lab Rats. So let's take a break. And when we come back, we have a little preview of some of the juicy, tasty, delicious stuff over on butterscotch.com. And of course, uh, picture time, as always, after this. Just want to let you know that uh, Windows 7 launches, at least as of now, when we shoot this, in 12 days, 11, uh, 18 hours, 27 minutes, and 52 seconds. 51 seconds, 50 seconds. I'm very excited. Set your watch. <laughs> Set your watch. Or four days? Yes. Four days. From the launch of this app? From the time the show airs. From the time, okay, well, so do your math, <laughs> figure it out. Anyway, um, we wanted to, uh, we're doing a lot of <laughs> work over at butterscotch.com to bring you lots of Windows 7 coverage. Uh, our tutorial beavers have been, you know, working away, uh, working on, uh, I'm making tutorials. Don't laugh. They are. They're like, they're really, they're eager beavers over there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to have tons and tons of Windows 7 content to teach you how to use the new operating system. So uh, let's take a little preview of one of those right now. And when we come back, picture time with no beavers. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. Now here in Windows 7, Poking around, I found a number of things that are exciting and are, to me, very positive changes in Windows 7 from Windows Vista. And one that was kind of interesting to me is a facelift for an old standby WordPad. You can see WordPad now has the ribbon, like Office 2007. So, of course, that is tasty tech tutorial content. If you want to see it all, go over to butterscotch.com with your favorite web browser, and uh, there's loads and loads of stuff there for you to learn Windows 7. Plenty of beavers. Lots of beavers. Lots of beavers. All right. Busy ones. Busy, busy. All right, picture time. We my have friend. pictures. Mm -hmm. And we have a uh, first one. This is from our uh, friend Samuel in Jackson, Tennessee. This is his computer, uh, and it looks like something that would probably run Windows 7 just fine. Well, I thought wanna... it was snakes there for a second. It's a lot of snakes. You know, yeah. back in the day before I started playing with, uh, with Macintosh as my main system of choice, I actually had systems like this. I just loved going in and playing with all of these cables and getting the cooling units going and all of that stuff. It's fun. It's, it's kind of scary, but um, it is also fun at the same time. Anyway. Whatever, float your boat. Yep. Okay. So anyways, that's, uh, that's his computer. And now we have a mm -hmm. picture of Samuel, who is at the game with his dad. 
Oh, cool. There you his go. Dad, his dad's taking a nap. His dad is taking a nap. Eyes closed. It's there like, you go. Which game? What kind of game? Uh, uh, now that, I don't know. Um, there's a dog collar on there, it looks like, on his uh Hung his shirt. down. I don't Football, know. maybe. Who knows? Possibly. Well, there you go. Super fabulous. Thank you, Samuel, for sending that in. There you go. And for the guy with the inside of his computer, thank you for that. We pictures of lakes and inside of people's computers. That seemed to be the big theme lately. And guys in European shorts, any more of those this week? No. 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 Thankfully. So sad. Okay, well, uh, as always, thank you for uh, tuning in to us this week and pushing play. We love when you come and see us. Uh, don't forget to visit uh, butterscotch.com for all the show notes for this episode and for previous episodes. And we're, what, episode 192 now, 193? This is 193, I believe. Approaching 200, so it's really exciting. We can see all of those Lab Rats episodes and lots of other stuff on butterscotch.com. Including beavers. Including beavers. All right, well, my name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Beaver is a noble animal. Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right.